What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Jeep Renegade Trailhawk. Huge thanks to Jeep for providing me with the refreshed Renegade here to review for you guys today. So about the 2020 Renegade. So this was actually refreshed last year for the 2019 model year uh, and it got a new engine to go along with it. It has this new 1.3 liter engine uh, as the upgraded engine here in the refreshed Renegade. And so anyway, they also refreshed the looks here last year and I like the looks. I think they kind of sharpened it up a little bit more. So this one has the optional LED headlamps, which uh, got a redesign and I think looked very sharp. They also made the uh, front bumper a little bit more aggressive there. You have those new fog light arrangements and uh, just a very cool look there and uh, I also like uh, this one with the dark blue with the black matte black stripe here on the hood is uh, a cool touch as well other things though so you know the Trailhawk versions all get these red accents you have the tow hooks you have the trail rated badge here and uh, you know many other little red accents all over as well as on the inside um, and so this is the most off-road ready version of the Renegade and uh, so this is the one that is actually trail rated and you know can keep up on a trail uh, pretty well but otherwise you know the renegade looks here are the same as they always have been it's a very squared off boxy look and it's really you know the uh, compact or subcompact crossover that is uh, you know supposed to be for those who want the retro design of the Jeep uh, and those round headlamps and the squared off tail lamps in the back which are a little bit darker now for these refreshed models and uh, it's just a very fun looking vehicle you know there are some other funky options in this segment but I think that the Jeep has the most character and uh, just the most fun personality just with its appearances and all the little easter eggs you have you know all over the vehicle as well all right so starting to go for a drive uh, the key fob here in the jeep is pretty nice the jeep on the front there and just a couple of buttons on the back this one also has the remote start which is always a nice feature uh, which is an optional extra but anyway uh, of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start so you just leave the key in your pocket hit the engine start button i love how it says to new adventures around the start button there and it starts right up and if you're curious to hear about the interior in the Renegade, my wife and I actually did a separate interior review on this vehicle. And I will link that above if you're curious to watch that. And it is a very fun interior. You know, it's very uh, quirky with all the red plastic you see and uh, just, you know, a very different shape to this whole interior. And so it's definitely standing out from the pack. And I still really like that about the uh, Renegade. It has a very bold character, both on the outside and on the inside as well. All right, so setting off here in the 2020 Jeep Renegade. So the first thing that you notice, well I think the first thing I notice, a minor annoyance, is that the parking brake automatically comes on every time you hit park, but it doesn't automatically disengage. So you have to go down there and hit that every time. Minor little thing, uh, not a huge deal, but just one thing that's out of the ordinary a little bit. Other things to note here, so you have excellent visibility in the Renegade. It's very boxy, and also the dashboard is very long, which is a different sensation from a lot of the other vehicles this competes with. So the windshield feels very far away, but also very vertical, which is uh, a very unique feeling. But visibility is very, very good though, because of the large glass. You do have a pretty thick A-pillar, just because it's kind of weird with the way it's shaped, but you're sitting up high enough, it doesn't really get in your way too much, and see, the high seating position really stands out. I mean, even among these small subcompact crossovers this you sit up even a little bit higher than most of those I think and uh, so it gives you a very truck like kind of feeling here in the Renegade and uh, yeah great view out of the sides good view out of the back all that kind of stuff is great other things to note here um, so I've noticed that uh, this engine is a very buzzy and um, it's a smaller engine than the previous Renegade. I did a 2016 uh, Renegade Trailhawk review already. And uh, so back then they uh, came with the normal 2.4 liter Tiger Shark naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. Now it comes with this 1.3 liter turbo engine instead. And um, on other lower versions of the Renegade, it's a like $1,500 option, but here on the uh, Trailhawk, it's standard. And it just has to rev a lot, because it's, I mean, it's a 1.3 liter. It's one of the smallest engine displacements, I think, uh, on sale here in America. And uh, so, I mean, it has a turbo, but that it really relies on that turbo for the power. And so it's a very laggy turbo setup, I've noticed, and I'll talk more about that once we uh, do an acceleration. Uh, but just whenever you're even at low speeds, throttle response is a little dead, and I wish it was a little more eager you know and you don't get much response until that turbo starts kicking in so it's a little disconnect there brakes though do feel very good you know the nice reassuring pedal 
a very predictable feeling to those. Um, also, the steering has a nice weight to it. It's a little bit weightier than some of the competitors, but it still isn't overkill. Um, you know, it still is fairly light and appropriate for this segment of vehicle, but just uh, a little bit reassuring. The wheel's also a little bit thicker um, than some of the competition. And uh, so, you know, it is a little bit buzzy with this engine and, you know, road noise can come through and stuff. So it's not the most refined vehicle, but it is a Jeep after all. A lot of people, you know, they don't mind the Jeeps aren't super luxurious. You know, they're okay with having a little bit of extra noise and a little less refinement. But let's turn down onto this back road here and see about an acceleration. Here we go. pretty good but it's it's not very impressive even with this engine so although the engine did downsize from the 1.4 liters that it used to do in the higher trim versions of the Renegade now it's 1.3 uh, turbocharged four-cylinder and uh, but it does do a little bit more power you have 177 horsepower 200 pound-feet of torque and that torque is a nice jump uh, horsepower is pretty similar to the naturally aspirated motor but that torque is a little bit higher uh, by a couple dozen and so the torque is nice it's just again you have to wait for that that torque to come on because of the lagginess of the engine here and so I've noticed so it runs a nine-speed automatic transmission that's what it puts all the power through here and the nine-speed is okay actually it, it doesn't hunt around too much and I don't really have an issue with it the only thing um, about it is that it sometimes waits a little bit too long to give me a downshift and then once it does give me a downshift then the engine goes crazy so I'm often overshooting my accelerations if that makes sense where you know I'm just wanting a little bit more power and instead it's like all right here we go we're going crazy and it just goes for it instead which is kind of an odd setup so not the most predictable but it is something I'm guessing if you you know kind of learn how the car reacts you'll be able to fine-tune your inputs a little bit uh, but not a great setup there and for that reason I still think I would actually prefer the nationally aspirated engine and especially considering this engine is $1,500 extra um, again if it's not standard like in the Trailhawk if you're going for a lower version I certainly would not pay the upcharge for this engine because the MPG is only two miles per gallon better than the naturally aspirated engine as well. And I just like the more predictable nature of the naturally aspirated motor. So that would be my pick as far as engine stuff goes. But we're coming up with some corners here and let's see how the Renegade handles them. So there is some lean to it. And the tires don't have a ton of grip. We just have these uh, Firestone tires here on here that are a little bit more off-road ready in their setup. Since again, we are in the Trailhawk version, you would have more normal all-season tires if you went for other versions of the Renegade. Um, but you know, the handling is actually fairly flat and kind of fun. It has very low limits, and so that's a very Jeep type thing, you know, if Wranglers are even worse with their handling. So this is certainly better than that, and I think for daily driving, this is gonna dr drive and handle a lot better than, you know, a Wrangler or something like that. But, um, you know, it still doesn't have as good of handling as a lot of the competition in this segment, which, um, you know, have more car-like rides, lower seating positions, and give you better handling, even despite the fact that they are also high riding, you know, crossovers. And so, you just have to take corners a little bit slower in this. Like I just had a Nissan Kicks a couple of weeks ago and that, you know, you could go around these corners much quicker. Same goes for the Hyundai Kona. Uh, basically every competitor in this segment is going to feel better around corners than this does. But I think it's part of the Jeep experience and it gives you those lower limits. And so it means that you feel like you're pushing it a little bit more and that can be exciting. It's one of those, you know, driving a slow car fast uh, can be more fun uh, sometimes. And so I don't mind the handling. It doesn't feel sloppy or anything. And the Trailhawks here actually have a little bit of a tighter suspension setup than what you get in other versions of the Renegade. Um, but all of them seem to handle pretty well from the few other times I've had Renegades as a loaner vehicle once and things like that. It's, it's a very nice riding vehicle for what it is. Um, it just, you know, I do hear a decent amount of road noise. It feels a little less refined in here, I think, than some of the competition. Um, but overall, you know, handling is about what you would expect for something that looks like this and has a Jeep badge on it, uh, but not too bad. So you have this uh, terrain mode selector down here, and you also have a four-wheel drive 
lock for the low mode and so you can uh, you know do some pretty legit off-roading in this and obviously you're gonna be limited by ground clearance and tires and all that kind of stuff it's not gonna be as good as a Wrangler or something like that but it is still you know uh, gonna be basically better than any other vehicle in this class uh, or anything that's not a Jeep honestly for the most part so I mean it's very very good if you do care about off-roading but you don't want to fully commit to something like a Wrangler this is a very nice middle ground for these Trailhawk versions since you do have the locker and stuff but it was interesting because I was actually just accelerating from a stop up a hill one day in the rain and it actually started spinning the front tires like I was like trying to do a burnout or something and it's in auto mode so I was assuming they would automatically switch to four-wheel drive if it was in front-wheel drive but it just spun the front wheels and that was kind of strange to me so if this does have a full-time four-wheel drive it's pretty slow to react because there was a couple of times where I was spinning the tires in the rain and that should not be happening in anything with a four-wheel drive badge on it if it is a true all-time four-wheel drive system I didn't see any switch for two-wheel drive so I think it was just a little slow to react which is kind of odd so um, interestingly might not be the best choice if you're looking for something that has full-time you know passive all-wheel drive but if you want to go and customize it and stuff then this is you know obviously going to be the only one that offers those lockers and stuff like that but just cruising on a more well-maintained road now you can see it's a pretty refined thing I still do hear a little bit of road noise but it's pretty mild and overall you know this is gonna be a totally fine commuter and I like its small dimensions and things like that it certainly helps um, one thing that whenever I was doing my little daily driving stuff that I noticed was the blind spot monitoring and the rear cross traffic alert this vehicle has as an option um, it has a very cheap sound to the buzzer and it's just it sounds like a buzzer instead of an actual chime like you get on most other vehicles that have these kinds of systems and it was very loud too and um, just felt really cheap and so that was something that was a little underwhelming every time you you know put your turn signal on if there's someone in your blind spot or you're reversing and cars are passing by you'll hear these bang, bang sounds and it's kind of annoying Another thing during my week of driving, so I only put about 60 miles on the Renegade here because we're still, I'm filming this in April of 2020 during the whole quarantine thing, so I basically just drove it back and forth to the grocery store and things like that. Um, and so since I wasn't able to put a ton of miles on it, I wasn't able to improve my fuel economy much. And I just did basically only uh, city driving in here, um, but my fuel economy is only 20.6 mpg. These are rated at 22 in the city, 27 on the highway, and 24 combined. And just that alone is one of the lower ratings in this class of vehicle. And even with this tiny 1.3 liter engine, I mean, it doesn't do you any favors because if you actually need that power to get up and go, that little turbo is sucking down tons of gas and killing that fuel economy. And so, um, it's kind of a bummer to be perfectly honest because in similar types of driving, even in three row crossovers, I've been getting pretty close to 20 miles to the gallon generally in my driving. So, I mean, again, the EPA numbers don't lie. I mean, it was saying like 22 for the city. I'm only about one MPG away here from that. So, you know, it's accurate. It's just, you know, pretty underwhelming that that's the best you get as far as fuel economy. Obviously, if you went for a front wheel drive version of the Renegade, you get a little bit better fuel economy. I think it goes up by one or two MPGs. But still, I mean, most of the competition, like again, that Nissan Kicks that I just drove a couple of weeks ago, that thing, even with its, I mean, it was pretty slow. It only had 125 horsepower. And I was flooring that thing everywhere I went just to get up and go in traffic. And even still, that thing was getting almost 30 miles to the gallon. I was getting like 20, 29 and a half in that vehicle. And again, much lighter, um, you know, all that type of stuff. Doesn't have four wheel drive, but still, it's just the fact is a lot of the other vehicles in this segment, it's not like they get a little bit better fuel economy. Like that Kicks was getting almost 10 MPG better than this. If fuel economy is something that you're worried about, um, and I feel like most people do care, so that's something you, you know paid for at the pump, um, this is certainly not going to be one of the better choices, but again, you get the four-wheel drive system, you get the boxier looks, the aerodynamics in this vehicle are probably much worse than basically all the competition, so that certainly doesn't help it on the highway or anything either, uh, but so that's just a, you know, a sacrifice you have to make if you're wanting to go for a Renegade here, just you don't get the best fuel economy even with this tiny little engine. The last thing to mention here about the Renegade is the pricing of it. And that is another area where you are paying for it. Um, Jeep, 
oftentimes, you know, you have to pay a premium for the Jeep brand. And um, so, you know, again, the lockers, the four-wheel drive system, if that's something you're interested in, in the subcompact class, this is your only option. You're paying for those extra goodies. And I understand that. So if that's what you're interested in, then this makes total sense in this Trailhawk version. While uh, these start around, like, I think almost $28,000. This one, as tested, has this uh, Skyview roof with these removable panels, and it's got the leather, which is an additional thing, even the LEDs and stuff. None of that stuff comes standard with the Trailhawks. So you can get a pretty stripped-down Trailhawk if you want. Um, but this one is $35,000 as tested for a subcompact. Um, I mean, you can get a fully loaded, larger SUV from take your pick from any manufacturer fully loaded $35,000 easily um, and there's even some premium brands with their small crossovers that get you know around 35,000 so again this is another area where you're paying the Jeep premium now they obviously most of the time have lots of incentives and stuff so you're very rarely paying MSRP for a Jeep but it's still just I have to compare MSRP versus MSRP and the way this is, um, it's just way more expensive. And even, you know, I mean, you can get a bare bones Renegade. And the nice thing with Jeep is they do allow you to do a la carte options. So if you, you know, want LED headlamps, but otherwise you want a bare bones Ren Renegade, you can get one of those. And the headlights are just like 650 bucks. Or if you want heated seats and steering wheel, that's $650 for those. So you don't have to go up to these higher trims. And a lot of the other competitors in this segment, they do make you go for a fully loaded model in order to get that stuff. So if you wanted to, you know, custom order a Renegade, or find one on a lot that had just the options you wanted, you can do that. And I really like that about it. And so if you were to go for a lower version of the Renegade, you didn't care about the all, all the off-road stuff, things like that, you could get a pretty nicely equipped Renegade for about twenty-eight or so thousand dollars. But even at twenty-eight thousand dollars, even with some of the all-wheel drive competitors and stuff, I mean that's competitive with like a fully loaded cross track or something like that, but it still is a little bit pricey. And then that combined with the fact you're paying more for gas because this doesn't get great fuel economy and stuff stuff um it's just a pricier choice so it's just another one of the compromises you make here with the renegade and so there are a decent amount of compromises and you know i do like the fun character of this vehicle i love its fun looks i like the fun accents on the interior and you know all the little eccentric things about it um it just comes at a price and so it's going to come down to you know whether or not that is worthwhile to you that's kind of a personal taste kind of thing but um, me personally I think there's a lot of competitors these days um, my favorite competitors even if you want something with around 200 horsepower or so my favorites like the Hyundai Kona you can get one of those with a turbo motor and all-wheel drive has a nicer interior in a lot of areas and um, all the same features and stuff and those actually feel much faster than this does you know this only has like an 8.9 seconds 0 to 60 the Kona can be a couple seconds faster zero to 60 even with similar power just because it's lighter and stuff and so i think the kona's just as fun to drive actually a little bit better handling um all that type of stuff and a kona even one of those with a turbo motor you can get around 27 28 000 as well the kia soul also if you don't care about four wheel drive you can get a front wheel drive version of that with a turbo motor you can get one of those for you know mid to high 20s as well that's another fun option in this segment that's very funky with its styling and stuff if that's what you're going for and so you know you have some options like that that I think undercut this a little bit and like stuff like the Hyundai and the Kia you got a 10-year warranty versus you know the five-year powertrain warranty you have on this so that's something it's you know not as great here in the Jeep so again there are these few compromises and I think you can still get a lot of fun and a lot of value in those competitors and so I would probably go for one of those before I would go for a Renegade personally even if you do like the uh, funkier styling um, but yeah so that's where the Jeep lands. Um, I still think, you know, for a certain niche of people that do want the off-road stuff, it certainly makes sense. And I think, you know, for those who just love its looks, I don't blame you. I think it is very fun looking. Um, then I, you know, it's also, you can get one of these as well. And obviously um, you could get one of these used since they've been out for several years now and get some of this stuff in a more affordable package that way too. But anyway, just a, a very interesting thing. And like I said, this motor, I wouldn't, you know, go for one of these new models for this new motor either personally. I think sticking with and actually aspirated uh, 2.4 liters is a better way to go anyway so yeah but overall the Renegade is still a very likable vehicle it's just you know between 2016 when I really liked it when it first came out and now there's been so many good new options 
I think the Renegade is just due for a full redo pretty soon here. You know, this is just a refresh last year, and I'm sure in a couple of years we'll have a brand new version. We also do know there's the plug-in hybrid version of the Renegade coming. For those who do want a faster Renegade, that's gonna be a great choice, because you'll, you'll have this engine with the electric boost um, to give you even zippier performance, and uh, those should be quite the hot rod. I think they, they're gonna be doing around 240 horsepower, and um, could be a lot of fun, so I'm excited to test one of those out. But in the meantime, this one's just okay. Um, and uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Renegade in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.